perfect. So, uh, James, welcome to the show. It is really cool to have Thank you here. It's a pleasure. Um, Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And, you know, jumping straight to the interview. Let's dig in here. Tell me how your acting career started. How it all started. Oh, wow. Well, I guess, you know, career and passion for acting are two different things, but I'll start like when I was very, very young, I have, I have very early memories of my dad bringing out a camera, you know, it was, it was like, you know, we got those big VHS tapes or whatever. Yeah, and he, yeah. he would, he would film me like just doing every regular thing. So I got really comfy with a camera from a really young age. And I, I think I got, I almost felt like home, you know, like uh, that kind of thing. And then he was a teacher. So he, he got me on stage really young doing, um, you know, we were, uh, it, it, the play was like some Peter Pan show and he got me on stage singing I Won't won't Grow Up by Peter Pan. So, and, and that, I think there's something infectious about being on stage in a live crowd and audience. And I think I just fell in love with it there. I was like, you know, whoa, like, oh, you know, this this whole auditorium of people just like cheering and, you know, this excitement. And, uh, and I think I just, um, I really started liking it. So early on ended up getting put into, you know, theater programs, like summer camps. I went to arts camp i did like little theater like plays community theater is a big thing i hopefully you have that where you are too but yeah. like it's everywhere and it's just a place where you can go meet a bunch of, uh, of people and i and i started that when i was really young too i think my first community show i was in like grade seven so after school my mom or my dad would drive me to rehearsal and then i'd rehearse you know until like 10 and then come back home go to school so i, I always had like a a real passion for it anytime there was a drama class this this that this anytime there was a chance to do um you know, uh, a, a presentation in, in school instead of, you know, instead of um, it just standing up there, I would like make a video or do a performance. It was like, I was always really, really into it. And I think that also had to do with um, like my love of movies too. Mm. I, you know, I'm sure, you know, just started loving movies at a young age. I was like, oh, this is a thing that people can do. This is crazy. So, yeah. you know, long, long story short, from a very young age, I was always kind of obsessed with acting, filmmaking, it, it, you know, in those little baby books where your mom asks you like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always either said like actor or director, I, like every year. And most of the time it was like actor, writer, direct. Like it was always something in that that vein. So I always knew what I wanted to do pretty, pretty young, but then, it, you know, it's it just like any path, it takes a long time to kind of figure out, okay, how do you make this a career? You know, so, yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you the truncated notes. Like I ended up, I went to arts high school, so I got into this awesome arts high school in Ottawa. Then I went to university for a year. Didn't really love that. I felt like I wasn't getting to act enough. I only got to like act two hours a day. And like the rest of the week was like other things. And I was like, well, I, I just want to act, man. And um, so I ended up, you know, going to, I, I, I dropped out of that. And then I just ended up doing independent theater. And then I went to Ottawa, did some indie musicals. Then I went to Victoria, did some indie theater. And I, I honestly feel like Victoria... Uh, some of the theater I got to do out there was a real training ground because we were doing really gritty plays that were like, you know, just insane characters, just like, go, you know, just in, in these little small theater houses. And yeah. I almost and, and I think we had like three weeks to prepare each play. And it was just like, you know, I remember one play I was like on stage the whole time. It was like a two and a half hour play. I had like the amount of lines I had to learn in just a week was, was insane. So I think that was really that really kind of got my wheels turned. So a lot of theater. And then, and then I realized, oh, sh I got to make a living out of it. Are we allowed to swear on your your show? Or yeah, yeah, you yeah, prefer not to? Okay, okay, yeah, cool. Okay, I just want to, I just want to make sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, okay. So I was like, oh shit! <laughs> and then I, I realized um, that uh, that I was just like, I, I need to make a career out of this. And it, you know, to do that, you need you need an agent. Like at that point, I was just doing little indie contracts and you know, just making the you know making the deals myself. So I was like, I got to do this for real. You know, and that cut to about 10, 11 years ago, I moved to Toronto, um, moved in with some buddies who were very similar to like doing the, like my buddy's trying, he was trying to be a stunt guy at the time, another buddy mm -hmm. acting and, and we were all kind of like, we all lived together in this little creative house. And then we, we, we essentially just started making demos for ourselves because we didn't have anything on film. So we just started filming for each other being like, hey, let's make ourselves look cool and like put the little demo reels together. <laughs> so, so it was like a little three man production team. We made all these little little uh, demo reels um, and then got my first agent through through that demo reel. And and then it's a slow build. You know, you start in non-union, you get a bunch of non-union things, and then yeah. eventually um, you decide. But yeah, I guess that's how it all started was was a passion, a deep passion for it. And I never really looked back aside from, there was like a year and a half of my life where I kind of, it was a, sad, a little bit of a sad year, but I was also working at a video store at the same time. So I was still kind of in it, but I was like, yeah, I wasn't really doing anything, but I was watching all these movies. So I think that was part of my, 
my training too because i realized how much i missed it mm. you know um yeah man i love it i love it that's pretty cool and and like digging there yeah like digging a little bit here to your acting career Jim, like how you prepare a character now i understand of course that it depends on the role but like what are usually are the first steps that you yeah you usually take to start this process to create a character mm -hmm. Uh, the first steps uh, for me, and you know, every actor is different. I mean, you talk to so many actors, so you probably get so many amazing, like, this is a cool, you must get so many amazing, um, you know, yeah. answers to this. But for me, for me, it very much starts with the script because you want to know, like, you know, you don't want to go too far off of that. So first it's like, okay, what do I need to do? What, you know, and, and you read, I read every line of the actor, read every line of the script for sure. Read the script a few times and then figure out what other characters say about you what you say, mm. you know, and, and, and base all of that kind of initial development off of the script and what you need to do, because, you know, it's uh, an acting role is just a cog of the wheel, right? Of the whole kind of story. And it's like, okay, where do I fit in? What is my, what do I need to do to help this mm -hmm. story, you know, be as good as it can be? So, you know, it, it, an example would be, you know, you, uh, you know, instead of just making some far or left field, like, I think that my character has a limp. It's like, yeah, but but does he? Like, is it in the script? Does it do it? You know, so so really base it all in the script first. Mm -hmm. And then I and then I go through, you know, the classic acting tree. I'm sure you've heard about the five W's. You, you got to ask, like, who are you? Where are you? What are you doing in the scene? Yeah. You know, the five, you know, um, what are the other ones? Yeah, who, what, where, why, when, when, when does it take place is a key one too. Like if you go into a, a role that like takes place in like the 1800s and you're playing it like a, you know, <laughs> like it's uh, modern, that's a problem. So you got to figure out all those little details. Like what, even what time of night can affect your performance too, right? Like if the, if the scene is like a character comes downstairs and he's like, uh, hey, who's there? Like, you know, you hear someone break in and, and you're playing it like you've been up all day. You know, like those little things, like all those little um, questions that you ask, like, what is the purpose of the scene? What's happening in the scene? And then the big one too, uh, a key one that I always ask myself for every scene is like, what's the relationship um, is so important. Like, how, because, you know, that would affect it a million different ways depending on the relationship of the other person in the scene mm -hmm. and what you're trying to get from them or what you, what the objective is. Like, what are you... What are you hoping happens at the end of the scene? Do you win? Do you lose? You know, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's how I start. You start, I personally start at the structure, start at the script, and then you can kind of, you know, during rehearsals, if you're lucky enough to have them or in the blocking rehearsals, then you can kind of start to figure out all these other things, um, you know, but, but yeah, I, I like to start at script and, uh, and try to do that justice. Yeah. I mean, I mean, though, I, I do think that those little details that you just mentioned are, like the key to make the character relatable, right? The character to be as when 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 we the audience watch it to be like, I totally care for this character because I find it very interesting the fact that that how much you can care about a character either for a TV show, play, movie, you know, things like that. That you really get into this, yeah, into this uh, way of thinking that you really care so much about this character because it, it somehow it got it got something there that connects with you, you know. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me, like, what has, yeah, like, like, what has been your funniest audition ever? <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, um, I, I think as far as the funniest goes, um, it's probably actually on the other side of the table. So, because, it, 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 like, um, something about me is that, I, I didn't go into the industry just acting. Like I, when I moved to Toronto, I started filming all these acting classes at this place called Armstrong Acting Studio. So I was like, wait, I can get paid to just sit in class and like learn. And then, then that that was cool. And then I literally filmed thousands of hours of classes. Then they hired me to start doing castings. So I was like film casting sessions and I would literally get to sit in the room and watch all these actors come in what they did, how, you know, the nerves, the, like, who was good, who would just talk the ear off and just annoyed everybody. Like, there was just so many little moments where I realized, okay, this, you know, I started to recalibrate and be like, okay, this is what you got to do in an audition because you learn from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. But I think one was, uh, it was for a, a film that me and my buddy were casting. And, you know, and he, what was the, uh, we were directing it actually. And, um, and he, and there's a scene with this, the girl, like, brings up a gun and she you know it, it, in auditions that you know a lot of the time they say don't 
don't put props. Don't bring props. Of course, you never want to bring a fake gun to an edition. I'll scare the shit out of everyone. If you're doing this, <laughs> if, if you're, <laughs> you, there have been stories. I've heard, literally heard stories of casting directors diving behind tables. Ah! <laughs> Someone just whips it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. But you also like you got to kind of make it real, right? So if you're doing it at home, maybe you could bring out a fake one if you have a fake one. But if you're in going out and you're doing it in a room, you don't want to do that. So the actress <laughs> was smart and she didn't. She didn't want to have a uh, fake one, so, but for some reason, like, my buddy was like, hey, hey, just hold this, and he gave her a stapler for the gun, and then I just, and the scene is this really serious scene where she's like, I, like, just, uh, stakes are so high, like, everything's just, like, it's just super intense, and, and, like, and then at the point where she pulls out the gun, she just, like, has the stapler. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, I swear to, like, I, I was like, it was one of those moments where you don't want to laugh, but you're trying, like, you have, like, I was just, like, yeah. laughing, like, so hard, and I felt so bad, because she's trying to give her addition, and I'm like, and like, I, and then he starts laughing, and, and it, I think we had to stop and then do another take, and then, you know, and then, um, yeah. I, I ended up having to, like, leave the room, like, I was just laughing so hard, just because, like, it was just so funny just to see, like, this serious, like, moment where it was, like, you know, the stapler, this, <laughs> stapler <laughs> coming out, um, you know, and for myself, I, I, I wouldn't even call it funny, but I remember I, I auditioned for a uh, fairly recent, it's maybe like a year ago, but I auditioned for this director that I worked with before. And I remember right at the very beginning, we, you know, you have a little chat and mm. sometimes I maybe talk too much. Like, you know, it's good just to get to business, but I was just like, um, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, how are you doing? And I kind of went over this whole thing. I was like, oh, you know, you did this show and you know, oh, that's so cool that you went from, um, I don't want to like, you know, say his name, just, you know, no, yeah, uh, go back. Yeah, so I was just kind of like, I was basically just describing this whole show that we worked on and like how much fun it was. And I'm like, oh man, you're doing this now. This is so cool that you went from that to this. And then we, we did the addition and he was a little odd that time. And then I was like, okay, see ya. And, and then, um, I get off the, the computer and I realized that I was totally had the wrong guy that was not like, <laughs> like oh. i worked with him before but it was on a totally different project <laughs> and i was like it was one of my first gigs and i was like kicking my i'm like oh man there's no way i'm getting this now like i literally just like rambled about him being the wrong person for like five minutes um <laughs> you know that that was very embarrassing yeah but, uh but did you get the role no <laughs> no, <laughs> no and, and, and it was it was literally a role where they were casting people to look identical like it was a very you know one of those like docudrama things and i fit the bill like i looked just like the guy so the only reason i lost that role was because i i, I talked myself out of it i think i mean it, i mean it it, it it happens right i mean we're human you know yeah. it happens it happens every yeah. now and then yeah yeah so i i totally get it i mean it happened to be once with this actor that uh so before when i Yeah, so when I was starting it, I used to watch a lot and uh, and, and, and get myself helped with IMDb, right? Mm, But what yeah. I didn't know about this is, so I got this interview. By the way, if you hear, if you hear dog noise in the background, I live with three dogs, so it tends to get noisy every now and then. Okay, anyway, no worries. <laughs> okay, so what happened was that, so I got an interview, everything's perfect. I got, you know, like, like the bulls are cheered. And then they start mentioning projects like, wow, so you were in Mother Family and, and you know, like big ones, you know, like Mother Family, The Office, like things like that. And then he just stopped me and he was like, yeah, but you know, they removed me from the cut. I was like, oh, Ooh. oh, and I felt like I was like, oh, and it was live. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah, there were like 10 seconds of silence. Jamita were like five hours of, of silence, I remember. And I started sweat because I was like. You know, and, 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 and like everything went blank. And then uh, he was like, yeah, but you know, they were kind enough for me to, to, uh, to give me credit to it. But yeah, they removed me from the cut. So no, no, no one saw it. And I was like, oh. So after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to stop definitely using that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah you, you know, you never know. Um... I've, I've been cut from things too and it's stuff that I told my whole family like at Christmas you know I'm like hey I'm gonna be in this you watch out they'll literally start watching the series and then it gets to the point where uh, you know you're see it's like oh crap I, I just got people involved in a whole series and now like I'm not even in it anymore but I, that happens a lot and, and being yeah. on the filmmaking side of things I had to do that recently in a feature and it wasn't because anybody's bad or or um, or necessarily like that their performance is bad it just didn't really fit the story that we we're trying to tell you I had to tighten it up and we we're just like oh this scene's not necessary you know boom cut it it, it does yeah. You know, it, it happens a lot more than uh, than you think. So now I'm really careful. Unless I know that my role is um, 
is going to be in it. Like, it has to be for the story. Yeah. I don't even tell people about it until it comes out. <laughs> yeah, no, you know? yeah, I get, I get, yeah, I mean, it, it, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, it gets, uh, it gets tricky sometimes. But um, but let's say that one day I called you and I told you that I want to become an actor. Now I don't have like, see, I have like zero experience. I mean, like, the only acting role I ever had was back in high school, with which I have only one line, and of course I screw it up. Uh, but it was fun, <laughs> I think. Uh, so let's say I'm on, that I want to start this career. What advice would you give to me as for as to me or or even someone who doesn't know anything about acting but wants to start this uh, this journey? Let's say. Yeah, great, uh, great question. I think. The key, the real key is that, I mean, I've seen people that started when they were like 50 and then all of a sudden get successful and, yeah. you know, you, you, there's no real, you know, age or skill set that you can start. That's the cool thing about this industry is like, you know, you hit the right spot at the right time, you can get a really cool project. Um, now, the the key thing I think for a new person to know is that and and i and i i did a video about this on my instagram recently too because i get a lot of questions about like um you know people will reach out be like hey put me in your next thing or do you have anything coming up um da, da, da. and i always and then i search their name and there's no video or like demo reel of them you know what i mean and i'm like that's key i think a having a headshot for sure is important get a professional headshot get a friend just eight by ten something that just shows how you look now not mm -hmm. how you look like 10 years ago you know um it, and then you're gonna want to have i would say or, or you know you might want to train a little bit first and get get good because you you want what what's on tape to be good but but i would just and this is honestly the exact formula that i followed was i took some theater scenes that i did and i put them on camera it's easy now with an even an iphone or whatever like a smartphone or um you get a friend with like a 5d camera whatever there's a way to get really good quality and mm -hmm. you just film film yourself and doing two or three different scenes you know and make it look like a like it's a project even if it's a low budget indie project fine just make it look like you were in some stuff and practice and you just show how you translate and also this is a cool thing about creating your own demo reel is you can pick the characters that you want to do right because the industry you can you can act for like 10 years and not even get a role necessarily that's like something that you're like oh this is the kind of stuff i really want to do you know it, your demo reel might just be like hey sir do you want water hey sir do you want pe you know like uh, all these yeah. different things but if, if you get to decide it's almost like a fast track where you can say you know i want to play serial killer so i'm gonna do a scene where i'm a serial killer and then you just like you put that scene together and then you say oh i want to play this role and then you put that together and you just put a little thing make it short keep it under three minutes and just or, or you know maybe yeah to start i would say no more than four minutes but definitely like at least you know maybe under three is good time even two minutes if you can show a lot of cool range yeah. but having the demo reel having the headshots getting on casting workbook i'm sure you've heard actors access those type mm -hmm. of things um are, are important for like just seeing breakdowns and starting to submit yourself but i would not even submit yourself until you have a a little bit of a demo reel and a headshot and then train like find a really trustworthy school or some place where you can just work your muscle or even if you can't afford it and you don't have you can't afford classes just get together with a friend and pick scenes and just do the scenes on camera on a webcam like just really you got it's a muscle man it's like we got to work our uh, you know it took it took me years to get to a point where i feel really comfortable you know with 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 scenes and stuff so like just doing years and years of theater and, and film and all this stuff and and when I, I forget what teacher told me this but i almost feel like each script you get is almost like a little piece of sheet music you know and and you're the musician you're the instrument so the more you like let's say i the first time i get a cop role where i go through it and i'm like oh this is a little challenging and you got to figure out okay how does a cop behave you do all your research you figure it all out it might take you like hours to plan for that role but the second time you get it you know it's like it's music you've already played you know so you can you know you can kind of oh okay I, I get this i know what this genre is i know what this this kind of character archetype is so it just makes it a little bit easier every time you play these types of roles and yeah so a uh, long rant there but i would basically say headshot demo reel train whether it's with a, a professional coach or just you know film yourself yeah. watch yourself on tape see how you translate and then the other key the other last piece of this puzzle is getting an agent um, depending on what area you're in. Now, the cool thing is now we do self-tape casting everywhere. So it's not that hard. You could reach out to an agent in probably a different country even and have them rep you, you know, um, depending on the, the case. So I would say then once, you, once you're proud of the work that you have to show and you feel like you could get into that edition and if you're sitting in front of like a big director, you could deliver, you know, and you wouldn't just um, totally freak out or whatever. Um, 
get an agent or you know even just start building like the thing that we all build from like one line rolls and you get comfortable on set then you build then you get a two line roll and then you know you just work your way up but yeah i would say those demo reel headshot are the most important and then and just train and like and and explore work and explore different different roles there you go yeah. there you go okay yeah. now moving on here let's say that one day hbo max netflix i mean you name it they call you and they tell you that that they got this idea of a film in which yeah. basically goes that all of the characters you have played at the moment you're gonna gather to celebrate your birthday so <laughs> tell me what will be the name of that film <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's there's um Oh god, I played such a weird eclectic mix of characters. So, okay. uh, so like thinking about that is hilarious. Like just ridiculous thinking about them all in the same room. So I, I, I think it would be called, um, you know, Fever Dream of uh, God. I, I mean, you know, the, it would be a uh, yeah, maybe called uh, Fever Dream Party or, oh, yeah. um, you know, maybe. Fever Dream Party of Death because I've I played definitely played some characters that have died a lot so I, okay. I feel like they're they're all gonna go down and a few of them will go down in some horrible ways so um, how about how about we'll call it the we'll call it a uh, you know the birthday comedy or the birthday party massacre. <laughs> sure. Okay, so 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 we're talking that sounds like comedy, but more yeah. with, with murder involved. Yeah, let's. It would definitely be a, a mix, and there'd be some drama in there too, you know. But it definitely would be a dark comedy for okay. sure. Okay, I like it. Now, <laughs> what about if you had to describe your whole acting career, but on a drink? Now you could choose one or create your own drink. Oh, so far, I, yeah, I would call it swamp water. Um, you know, you, you know when you go into you go into a subway or somewhere and you just put a little bit of pop in like every cup. That would that would be my drink because you know looking at my my resume it's like it's very it's it's I, I like being a character I like being in a, in a place where I don't get to necessarily play the same roles every time like I I played like doctors in the eight you know 1800s and I played criminals and you know and um and and I yeah I've gotten to play a lot of eclectic people people breaking mm. out of prisons and in, in Russia and like I've just I've gotten to play a lot of different things I like to do comedies drama I've done so many different genres so yeah I, I guess I would call it swamp water. Oh, okay. okay okay and like my last question here is like what motivates you you know we all have those days that we just want to quit you know regardless if things might be okay or even nothing is mm -hmm. happening but we get into this feeling that we should quit so my question here is like what gets you out of those thoughts so you can continue creating and on this journey that you have been for like many years now that's yeah that's a really good question and and there can be especially as an artist there can be darker days and and days where you're feeling down or like being like oh you know it's such a grind is it worth it but I think what motivates me is just knowing how much I love acting and love filmmaking and love yeah. storytelling. So knowing that and and taking my career into my own hands by writing my own stuff and I'm pitching my own stuff and I'm, you know, I, I you know, I feel like um, what motivates me is just knowing that I love it and knowing that no matter what happens, whether I get a call tomorrow from my agent or whether I get a call in two months from now, I always have like a project on the go that I'm like building and then I'm like mm. creating. So I'm always like, I always feel like I'm creatively fulfilled. So, you know, I, whether like I'm, I'm pitching a script right now, it's a horror comedy, uh, writing another film with a buddy that hopefully will get filmed early next year. Um, you know, I always feel like, um, that keeps me motivated knowing that like, all right, you know, I might even say, I don't even get a role for six months. I'm going to have, a, you know, I'm creating my own roles. Totally. And I think, I think a lot of artists nowadays, especially in this digital age, like we can, uh, you know, it, people say, oh, I want to act. Oh, but I just, you know, but I've never get it. It's like, you can act, you can literally act tomorrow <laughs> if you want, you know, you just, you just set up a phone and you perform a scene. You could change your life. You put that scene on YouTube and boom, it hits the right people. It goes by like, there's so many ways to do what you love now. And, uh, and that excites me. I think that's what keeps me motivated being creative and, and creating my own opportunities. I love it. I mean, at the end, what can I say, man? I mean, you, your career is really cool and both, but also the, like the fact here that you are doing 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 like what makes you happy basically i mean we we all know that that is like super cliche right do what makes you happy and everything but it's really hard and sometimes you can take like your whole like your whole life to finally discover what makes you happy but the fact that you found it you are working on it you got the results i mean uh as i've been saying this to like to all of the actors that have interviewed you are making results and i think that is really proof that dreams can come true you know 
Yeah. And but of course, there is like this huge amount of hard work that we, the audience, we don't know. I mean, at the end, we will we will be only be watching the final product, and that's it. But we don't know anything about the casting, the script, the behind the scenes, and everything. So I so I know now that it's a huge process behind it, and it's really cool the, that 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 um, you managed to you know make it happen, uh, create something for for we. For us, the audience, we can enjoy it, have a good time, relax, or even distract ourselves from this crazy world recently. So the fact that you're doing that is really cool, man. And yeah, I mean, I'm super sure that, who knows, maybe at some point you will even get your own action figure. That would be cool. Ah, yes, that would be so cool. I, I would love that. That would be cool. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you so much for being here. I, I also want to thank those who watch this. Uh, thank you so much. Either if you're listening to this on Spotify or, or Apple Podcast, the video's over. But make sure to go follow James, like, right now. So let's make him viral. Hashtag Team James. He's awesome. He's amazing. And again, man, thank you so, so much. Have an incredible rest of the week. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. All right.